Hello, it's Sarah, and I haven't made it. I have made videos. I just haven't posted them. I don't know what it is. I feel like I repeat myself. Anyway, my mandalas are coming along. I actually have the opportunity to be published in. It's called the Pixelated Palette. For those of you, I used to get um, painting magazines all the time, and I have tons of them. Toll World. Um, painting I the paint I forget their names <laughs> I have no brain anyway um, my mandalas are evolving and I'm starting to create my own designs and I've shared with well you guys on my page but there's also um, creative innovations in painting and that's uh, Debbie Cole started that page to kind of help decorative painting evolve with the times and grow with the mixed media craze and all the stamping that's going on stuff like that so she saw me on youtube and invited me um anywho so i'm being noticed now and this is where my head's at in the moment so it's kind of going hand in hand um i want to just show you so this was the first one that i really kind of it all started with barb owen and her class called mandala madness where I learned how to create my own mandala shapes. And a mandala is just a circular pattern. Um, anywho, but then I started to add color to the designs because I, I tend to love color. I'm just, and these, these are wood burned as well. They're all um, on birch pine, pine birch, I don't know. See, look, I'm not a professional, I'm just a creator. Like that's the thing about this stuff. I don't have, um, I'm not a businesswoman. I'm just a, I like to enjoy, I like to make things. Um, so you've seen all these. This one I did um, a summertime one, and I think I shared this too on my Facebook, I'm not sure. Um, just starting to add, maybe do um, themes or something like that. So I posted the 4th of July one. Let's see, so then I just wanted to make the beat. This is just a totally buggy one. Dragonflies, uh, bees, and ladybugs and I could have put a butterfly but I didn't um, but this one I did last night this is my fall and I'm gonna change it some and this is so many coats of paint like this is not as sheer as I normally do because I was playing with the colors and trying to figure out what colors I wanted to use like this pumpkin looks much darker than say this one you know like because I was trying to get just the right colors um, and let's see, I really, on my, um, acorns, I really changed the color a lot, but I mean, I got, I think I got it where I wanted it. The other thing is, so also when I designed, I just made everything stay in that kind of grid, but I think what I like to do is alternate. By that I mean like I would put acorn and then move the leaf over so it kind of goes like this I don't know I mean this is cool but I don't like the way these are sitting on top of each other um, and also that maybe wouldn't be as noticeable if I had to put the berry wreath there's a berry wreath here between these two there's one between these two but then I put it on the outside edge I think I'm gonna change it and I'm gonna put it on this so it'll be a berry wreath in between each one. That would probably help this part and I would be okay with them being right on top of each other. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, so for today, I had a question about how I add color. Oh, this is the 4th of July one, which I also would change. And this is a little eight inch. So this is a 10 inch mandala. But I ordered some eights because I figured if you guys wanted to do these with me, you could do this on a piece of paper. Tens are harder to get, like you would need the, um, like a bigger size sheet of paper. Most paper isn't 10 inches round, but you can always use an eight inch round, like in your art journal or whatever. So I'm, I just wanted to create some for um, that size. And um, I actually started to tweak this, if you come down. Um, I wanted to take out this check part and just let it flow that way and so I and I also wanted to turn 
So see how the USA and the hearts are pointing outward, and so is the banner. It's really because of the banner I pointed everything outward, but I want it to point in. The banner's still pointing out, but now everything's pointing in. So my USA is here, and then I'll do the fireworks. But I kind of put that aside last night and started working on this guy, which is just one of my old kind of, let's see, I'll come up a tiny bit. And I want to just give this a sanding because I always seal the wood after I burn when I before I paint because um, paint will just soak right in. The wood will suck the paint down into, the, into it. It's porous, so I need to make somewhere for the paint to sit. And I'm just giving this, this is a very fine sandpaper. Because when you seal it, the wood, the tooth of the wood comes up a little bit. Because you're putting moisture on it. That's good enough. And then I'm just going to take a paper towel. And I'm just going to show you, I, I'm pretty sure I had um, done a video like this uh, where I just show you how I add color. So, as I said in the beginning of the video, I was a decorative painter for years. And a decorative painting, it used to be, and it still is, um, it was a version of toll painting. Toll painting came from back in the early days, and it was very country. Lots of, you, everyone probably has those hearts and the little um, ducks, things like that. It was very, a uh, little bit of stroke work and stuff like that. Um, but it evolved, and, and um, I went to tons of conventions and took lots of different classes with lots of different teachers. Um, and over the years, I've tried many, many different crafts. I've, you know, my polymer clay, um, my mosaics and things like that. Um, wood burning is, is what I'm doing now. I did paper crafting for a long time as well, stained glass, um, pretty much anything. I'm, I'm macrame. Um, but I tend to always come back to painting and color and when I found wood burning it's great I love it it's it's I have some pieces that are just burned there's no color but when I add color it comes to life and it's mine and it takes on a, a different uh, feel that that I feel like comes from my soul right so um, I'm gonna just share I use a palette, a paper palette. This is, um, you can get these at the craft stores. Palette paper. This is by Strathmore. They come in all brands. It's just like a waxy paper. And I use this to put my paint on and, and to load my brush. Because the technique that I use on my wood burning pieces is called a float. And in decorative painting, it's used to highlight and shade. Um, it's used for a lot of things, but the way, wh where the name comes from is the actual way the paint is loaded into the brush. So let's start. I can't wait. I can't wait. Oh, I need some paper towels. So I always have a stack of paper towels and my palette paper and a water bucket right there. And then... I'm going to use probably one or one or two brushes. I have been using a half inch. I like an angle brush as well. And um, it was so interesting. The admins for the creative um, innovations in, in um, painting did a, a Q and A about what brushes are your favorite brushes to use. And it's so I learn so much all the time. But my thing this year has been use what you have. Um, I feel, truly feel like you can get a good enough result and enjoy the process with the brushes they have at the craft store. That being said, tools are tools and the better quality the tool, the better quality the work sometimes, you know, depending on, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure hammers have their <laughs> pluses and minuses, but uh, in painting, you know, there are synthetic bristles, there's, there are, um, you know, Sorry, I needed a sip of coffee. Anywho, I'm not going to do a brush. These are by the Artist Club, which is no longer in um, business. Um, so, and most of them, this brush here is American Painter. Uh, 
I got this at AC Moore that is closed now. So, hey, I need some new brushes, evidently. Uh, they're going out of business. I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to show you how to float first. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is put a little puddle of paint out. What do I want to start with? Let's start with orange. I don't know if I'm going to do orange. I'm just going to go straight to red because I've been doing a lot of three shades of color, but I'm going to, this one I'm going to keep real simple. So I'm just going to keep it simple because it doesn't need to be complicated, you guys. You can have fun. You can love the outcome and keep it real simple. So I like to use an angle brush. There's a point on one side. Oh, this side. That's where I'm going to load the paint onto the, onto the brush. And I'm just going to take a little bit. Because for this te technique that I'm doing, it's basically washes. And a wash is mostly water and a little bit of color. So then I'm gonna take my brush and put it down on my palette paper, all of the bristles, not just the tip, and just push it back and forth. See, I'm slightly going this way, but I'm mainly just pushing it into the paint, yep. So I'm loading the bristles now. Now that paint has gone from this corner and it's moving, it's floating across the bristles on the water that's in my brush. So I'm going to go back into my, I'm going to start again. I'm going to rinse my brush off. Blot on my paper towel. So I take the brush and I just go like this and the, and the water sucks out of the brush. There's still water in the brush. You always need water in the brush. Acrylics and water are best friends. And then I'm just going to go right back into that runway that I had. But I like a lot of paint. I can't help it. So for me, it's harder for me to pull back from color. So using this as my source is way better than me going here all the time. Because if I keep going to this, I'm going to end up with a lot of color on my brush. I can just load my brush from right here because there's paint, water. There's paint and water. That's all I need. And so I'm just going to create a little runway that I can come back to to reload my brush and let's see what I get. I'm going to start with these little hearts. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to start with these petals and I want them to graduate. I'm going to start with the red right in the root of the petal. And okay, let me talk about what I'm doing. I'm putting the color, the darkest color, and this is not a heavy load at all. This is super sheer in that corner, but all of the bristles are on the surface. So I'm actually putting down the darkest color here, but water is going over there. If I've loaded the brush correctly, let me go a little darker because that's not going to satisfy me. For some reason, I, ugh, I need it darker and that's it. Listen to your, listen to your spirit. Listen to your painterly spirit. Listen to your artistic creativity. Don't make it like someone else's. That is the thing that I have, the main thing I've come away from in all of my artistic journey is that it's okay for it to be mine. And that is the best gift that I've received because for years I, and I'm a great painter when it comes to doing other people's work and I love doing other people's work because what I mean is Someone created this, and I don't remember who. This was actually in a magazine. I probably painted this at, um, I, I belong to the, the Society of Decorative Painters, and we had a local chapter, and I believe this was a project, or it would have been maybe Vicki. Dude, I've been painting for a long time. This could be 25 years ago. Um, anywho, someone else created this. They did a line drawing that I could then trace onto this piece of wood. They told me what colors to use and how to put them down. This looks like dry brushing up here. I probably floated it. I don't know. And I loved that because I didn't have to think. I didn't have to know how to design. I didn't have to know how to draw. Um, and I was still able to come away with something that I loved and, and 
um, by learning the techniques of decorative painting. So for a long time, hey, my house is filled with other people's art, with other people's designs, I should say. It is my art because I did create it. You know what I'm saying? But there is something, I'm, I'm just now, it's evolved and I am now learning to create and look my designs are super whimsical they're not realistic at all there I'm I've never taken um, an art class um, say um, a study you know a college class or the history of art or why um, certain styles of art are the way they are I don't know those things what I know is it makes me happy to put this color on here. <laughs> That's all I know. Um, I mean, I, I do know a few things, but I don't worry about all the stuff of why, how it's evolved, and what makes art valuable. You know what makes anything valuable is if someone wants it. That's, the, that's how it gets valuable to me. Um, and, you know, nowadays, things are so mass produced it's it's hard to find something that was made by hand you know so um, that can be something that people covet as well if you if you want something that someone took the time to actually sit down and make then that's worth it you know but I order from Amazon all the time I'm not concerned with where it's made sometimes or how it was made which is you know sad it's just the life we live now it's a very fast pace. Um, anywho, I don't want to get too philosophical, but all I'm doing is going right back to that um, runway, I call it, right? Putting the color, and my brush is splitting. It's not the best brush, but I am able to get a nice washed effect where it's darker on this end and lighter on the other, and then I'm going to flip it. And I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put a little bit of yellow. And I'm not going to use my bright, bright yellow. That's the other thing about design. I'm from the decorative painting world where they're, um, we're bottle babies. And I buy these decorative paints and um, they're wonderful. They're already mixed to the exact color. So every time I put it out, I know what I'm getting. I don't need to mix the paint. And But there's something to be said for paint mixing. I think it's it's important to understand that the true artists back in the day used solvents and chemicals to create color. And that's why red is hard to find because I think the pigment that makes red is, is it's made from something that's harder to find. Like, I don't know. There's history in everything, you guys. But I'm going to go into my green. And these are just colors that I've had forever that I think go together well. And that, again, it comes from my personal preference and um, what I like. When I design, I get to choose what I like, what appeals to my eye, you know. And when you start to do decorative painting and say, um, start to favor one artist over the other, it's because something about the way that artist designs, their line drawings appeal to you, the colors they use appeal to you. Um, and that's going to be personal preference. Um, not every um, designer out there appeals to me, and I won't appeal to everyone, you know. So that's why there's apples and oranges, you know. There's black and white. There's everything for everyone. So don't think that you have to, that you're stuck. If something's not working, find what works for you. And that's what, you know, what I feel... Um, that's a little bit of wisdom that I have to offer you guys. I've, I've figured a few things out <laughs> in my life. And if you are unhappy, make yourself happy. Don't wait for someone to make you happy. You can do it yourself. And meanwhile, painting this, just doing this with my brush, paint and water on a surface makes me happy. And so I feel like this is at least, I know a lot of you guys, my subscribers, are waiting for me to do polymer clay again. 
And I can never say never, guys, because something will appeal to me and I'll want to do it. But right now, this is where I'm at. I am, I am, right now, in this 2020, which is, it's so interesting. I was thinking about 2020 is going to be an interesting year. My niece was born in 2020, my great niece, my first, my brother's first grandchild was born in 2020. Um, I have been making mandalas in 2020. The coronavirus happened in 2020. And it's just been such a crazy year. And there's always balance, guys. That's why the yin-yang. There's good and bad in everything. All right, so look. So far, it's not a lot, but this is how I add color to my pieces. Um, I'm going to go back to the red real quick because this one's going to work up quick. So like I was saying in the beginning, I'm going to be... I. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be um, published in the pixelated palette um, in 2021 because 2020 is already um, filled for the year. You know, you have to kind of plan things ahead. Anywho, um, so I've been working on designs that can be possibly uh, maybe done in the seasons or things like that so that's why I did I first did the summer one so where's my summer one so that's why I did the fall well the fall ones pretty much for because Debbie wants to do something I think the theme for next month or maybe it's September you know in um, on the Facebook page innovations in creative painting so anywho I'm kind of designing with those things in mind at the moment in the beginning, I was simply doing it because I'm curious, and I and I and it just started to evolve very um, organically. And it really started with Richie when my brother passed. This piece here, which is came completely from my heart, and it was for my brother. And oh, I almost got a little choked up, but it did. Um, I made this mandala, the shape, the 6.1 with Barb Owen. She taught us how to do it. It's called something, but I can't remember and I can't find it. Anyway, but then when I added the waves and the sunsets and the water, and these are surfboards to me in my mind's eye because Richie was a surfer, I, it really hit home for me that I can create something, that that is, I can design. And it just started a whole, I just started running with it. And I just started adding things that I love that spoke to me little by little. And then once I decided what speaks to me, what I love, I started trying to organize them into a theme or things that other people might like. So the, the bumblebees, you know, and the night sky and things like that. Um, it's been so fun and um, it's keeping me interested because that's the thing. Sometimes I'll do something for a while. Like I think that's what happened with the polymer clay. I actually kind of burned myself out a little bit and I need something new. If I'm not really, if nothing's, if it gets stagnant, I need to keep learning for some reason or I get bored and and then I move on <laughs> I just move on and the next shiny thing comes along and I want to try that and I need to learn and that's that's hard because a lot of times we need um, you need to buy uh, supplies and things and I have so much I have like, I don't know that I'll ever do paper crafting again. I just don't know that I'll ever do it. I mean, if I really needed to make a card, or you know when it would come in handy, all the stuff I have and all the things I've learned is if I had kids or grandkids around here, we could make lots of school projects, um, things like that, you know, with poster board and things. Like, I have all those supplies. Um, but I have so many projects 
that I've done in my basement in boxes that I'm not, you know, and with paper products, they don't stay as long. The, the adhesives give way. Well, maybe they wouldn't if they weren't in the basement because it's damp down there. Well, it's it's got carpeting and stuff, but it's still a basement. You know what I mean? It's not wet, but it's just prone to dampness. Anywho, um, I don't know that they last as long. So these types of things, this could literally be an heirloom. Like, it could. I think this, I see this piece here being an heirloom because it's wood and acrylic paint it isn't going anywhere I think if you left it in the window of course it's gonna fade this brush isn't the best I'm gonna have to listen to my girls on the admin page and I'm gonna order myself some new brushes it's just that I get brushes I do order brushes and get them um, ones that are recommended by other artists and things like that and I don't mind spending a little bit. It's okay. Like, I'm, I'm actually in the position where I can afford to spend a little bit on a brush. Um, but they don't always work for me. They don't, you know, I mean, I think, again, it's just personal preference. They just have to be just so for me to love them. All right, I don't even know if I was in the picture because I'm so into what I'm saying. All right, more red. I want to show you what I'm going to do with this red. So instead of orange, red and yellow make orange, so if it overlaps, it's possible that I'll get some orange. But I'm going to take, I stick the color in the corner, and I'm walking around the sun, and I'm just walking it up. And I don't try to be exact. It doesn't have to be even on both sides. Um, you know, nature, it's very interesting uh, because it is perfect. See, I just went out of lines too much. I'm getting a little, calm down, Sarah, a little turned up here. Um, nature is perfect in some respects, although nothing is perfect, really. Um, there are flaws. Maybe we don't see them. So I don't worry about perfection at all anymore. I am a good enough, and I enjoy the process. I worry about how I'm feeling in the moment more than the result. And if it's going, if I'm not feeling it, get up and walk away. Stop doing it. If something, if things aren't going right, which you can just have a day like that, where it's just things aren't going right, go do something else. And I tend to go for a walk a lot of times. I get those, get that energy flowing. Now you can tell I had a lot more color on my brush there. It's starting to fade, and this is a lot more water. And that's the greatness of this, this medium because you can always add more, and that's why I try, to, I try to start out light. It's hard for me, but I can go back and tickle a little bit more there until I'm happy. Hopefully I was in the shot. I'm going to put red right there too. Let's see. So, so far I've used two colors and this is what it's already going to be great. But man, once I add, and then I'm going black and black and white. The contrast is what I've, I've discovered. Hey Joe, are you on your lunch break? Good job. I'm making a video. Okay. Anywho, yes, the black and white, this is basically <laughs> virtual hugs, Joe. <laughs> this is basically what um, the contrast does on the piece. But anyway, so this is kind of a version of that. You know, I left off the bees and the bee scaps, but I got the leaves and anywho. Um, so, but I'm going to go ahead and put my next color on because I can come back and do that. I want to show you when it starts to really pop. And I've been using Cad Yellow. This is so bright. I don't know if I'm going to be able to not do it, but look at the difference. So this is a little bit more mustardy. I really, I don't know. I think I'm going to go Cad. I'm going to. I'm going to stick with it. It makes me happy. And then I use this olive green as my highlight for the, and 
they're just so popping, right? And that's where Sarah comes out in here because there's so many colors that I could choose. But because I choose CAD yellow, which is just such a bright, OMG, I can't even. It's so yummy. All right, here I go. Watch this. I'm going to put this on the tips and walk it down. And if it overlaps the red, that's where I get a little orange. It's a little wet, my brush, but that's okay. Am I in the shot? Yellow in the tip, and then I'm overlapping the red. So this is another thing I have realized, because I am very um, impatient. It's one of my character defects. I'm learning when patience is important. But right now, it's, it's, it's important for me to be patient because I don't want it to be messy. And I need it to um, be a quality work. I don't want to, you know. So I'm being patient with myself, knowing that this takes time, the process takes time. Be in the moment and enjoy the process. But I don't need to add three colors to get the same, well, it definitely makes a difference. Actually, I was listening to one of my favorite designers, Maxine Thomas, did a, um, you guys should, should, I don't think she, it was a Facebook Live. She did a little tutorial on there, and OMG, you guys, you will learn so much. Anyway, um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, she was saying that every color she uses adds like $100. So if she's shading and then she does three layers of shading to get like the graduation of depth of color and all that stuff, I thought, wow, okay. I mean, and it makes sense because this is a very time staking process. I'm, you know, painting every petal by hand. You can't, I don't like charging for this stuff. Like that's just not, the business part of it is so hard for me. And sometimes I can't, I have to realize and be respectful of others who are doing this for their living. You know, I just do it for fun and to share with you guys, but I can't just go ahead and say that this is here free, you know, here, have it, when other people are, you know, making money and trying to put food on the table. But look, OMG, come on, stop. I can't. It's so pretty. All right, and then I'm going to do the same thing to the sunsets. Well, I, let me just stick a little red in here first so you can see the completed... So I'm going to put a little bit of red. I, you know, I don't remember if I did this before on camera. Um, and, you know, I could have just taken and gone like that. I didn't need to go around, but I wanted to go on top. That's why I did it. But basically, when I turn my brush like that, it's to get the water to go that way. You need to pivot the brush to get... Um, Anyway, there's there's a finesse to it. All right, so now I have my red up there. Now wait until I add this yellow. And if I would have put the orange, yes, it definitely looks different when I put orange, red, and yellow. But I'm impatient, like I said. And for today, just for today, I don't know what I'll do the next time. <laughs> but just for today, I'm going to do two colors. And that's my business because I watch Tabitha. That's my business. That's not how she says it. So, um, and it'll give a little hint of orange if I overlap. Like, I could have done orange in the middle there, but I'm just doing this. I'm making a video, Maddie. You going for a walk? No. Okay. Is your, um, Thyroid doctor glasser or no? No. no okay. It's uh. Do you have a doctor glasser? Or mm -mm. Okay. I was just wondering because somebody was talking about their thyroid and doctor glasser. So okay. I'm not sure. Nope. Dr. Sherry Kaminsky. Did you go yet or no? no? Nope. Right, I just I'll, started I'll, doing this. I'll let you know when I go, all right? Okay, babe. Um. 
anywho, I will show you the, oops, um, the three color version actually. And I have to say, it's worth, it is worth the effort because you know what, I miss my orange now, now that, now that I'm talking about it. Like all of a sudden orange has become a really one of my favorite colors and I was never a yellow or orange girl at all um, but okay so that's the yellow see how vibrant so good all right let me put a little bit of this olive green and then I'll come back when it's done you don't need to see oh no wait I gotta show you one more thing Kiwi's on my shoulder Kiwi what are you doing are you having fun up there She's just rubbing her face all over my shirt. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Sorry, I'm just loading my brush. And I'm going to go, I'm going to put the color down at the tip of the leaf. And walk it the other way. I always turn the piece as well. Turn whatever you're working on. So that you're, because I'm right-handed, I like to work, it feels better at a certain angle. So that's how I do it. I want it to feel good because guess what? If it feels good, I'll keep going. If it doesn't feel good, I am not going to keep going. I'm not going to have fun. What's the point? Life is too short. If it's not fun, don't do it. But I do want to say, a lot of you guys say, oh, I could never do that. You know, you know what? Until you try, you're not going to know. So, I mean, if you're okay with resigning to yourself to never doing that, because that's all that's going to happen if you never do it. <laughs> okay, that's good. You're never going to do it then. But guess what? If you try, you might become fabulous artist so I at least try and, I, and then I realize yeah that's not for me it wasn't that fun or OMG I loved it but I've given up fear in my old age I'm not gonna live my life in fear and this you know the coronavirus is teaching us that um, I don't want to get sick. I'm not I'm not messing with you. I don't want to get sick. I don't know that I have pre-existing um, some of the pre-existing issues that are making people very sick, but there's no rhyme or reason to this virus. So I am just going to do what it takes to stay safe, and I know that this too shall pass, but I'm not living in fear. I put my mask on and I do what I think is best. I wash my hands. I keep social distance. Um, and it, it'll it pass. I don't need to go party right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm okay right here in my craft room. So that's why, especially at a time like this, maybe this is the best time for you to try new things because you're home and you might not have the opportunity at, at another time right I'm a little I feel like I'm a little self-conscious because I know Joe is um babe are you listening to me okay. don't no I can I'm just talking to my peeps babe I know. <laughs> I know anyway it's funny because I feel like I'm um, a little self-conscious because I know he's there which is weird I shouldn't be because he knows me better than anybody. But look at that, you guys. Kiwi, don't bite my ear. And then there's one more thing that I want to do. The night sky. And I use soft black. There's a lot of different colors of black. There's um, graphite, charcoal, um, and just um, carbon black, whatever this is called. What do they call it? ebony lamp black but I chose to use soft black and it, unless it's right next to true black you don't really know I mean it just comes out as um, 
going to use a little bit of a bigger brush this time because I want this to kind of come down, which I never have a problem doing. I Maybe I'm... Kiwi, don't do that. Oh, she's tickling my ear. So I'm going to just start in the corner right here, and I'm going to go right over the moon and just go right down that side. There's a lot of water on my brush, but it's better for me because if not, oops, see I just loaded this watch. Watch how much darker this float. Oh, not really. It's just because this brush is my favorite. It holds so much water. I just love it so much. It's um, an American painter. It's beat up. I have, I don't know how much longer it's going to last, but I might have other ones of these. <gasps> I just remembered that I think I bought more of these. I don't know where I put them because they seem more closed. It's so sad. I think Michael's actually bought AC more. So maybe they'll start to carry some of the um, same because uh, all of the craft stores carry different um, brands if you didn't know, because I'm just plugging in my my camera. Um, so, there's hope there. Like Hobby Lobby definitely has different wood. They have, they must have different vendors. That's all, right? I mean, see, my, that was much darker. But that's okay, because when I go to the other side, So now I'm going to do it on the other side. And this should be dry enough for me. Yeah, by the time I get back around to it, all the water is dried so I can go down and I won't pick up what I put down. And I'm just sticking it right down in there. I think there was a, a, a paint boogie there because that really looks like chalky. I'm going to reload my brush. I haven't rinsed it. Let's just rinse, blot come back and reload something I think something was in the um, hairs I call it a paint bookie but you know a little see no there's a hair or something see that hair but again this isn't um, I'm not looking for perfection I just want to get the color on there and I think that's very helpful in this day and age to not don't sweat the small stuff and oh also when you walk away from this it's man you're not focused on that one float right there and you see it as a whole that's that's a good thing so walk away come back and guess what it's gonna look great don't worry. See, this has like little fudgies in it. I don't know, something. The wood has little um, imperfections as well. Kiwi, what are you saying, huh? What are you saying, baby girl? Guys, I think I might just finish this with you because I'm enjoying it. Let's see, come up. That's what I mean. When you walk away, and you take it in as a whole. Um, I need to add yellow, but like this section is all done. Like if you look at that, well, right there. <laughs> and I'm not done yet. We got to add white. But for the um, the yin yang, I've been kind of painting it in. Like it's it's not opaque I would say but a very sheer it's not it's not a wash but it's watch I'll show you what it is so I'm using this is like a number one liner and I'm just gonna paint it in it's very wet and I, I keep over stroking where I've already gone because that keeps the ridges at bay and, it, and actually my brush is really wet it's probably a little I just blotted it because um, when you do a wash you really need to have um, 
just the right amounts of color and paint. And I might go over that again. It looks a little bit too sheer, like I had a little bit too much water in my brush, but that's okay. And that goes there. Yeah, it's, I'm going right back over it because I, I think it was too watery. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to get it um, without letting it dry first. It's better to let the first coat dry and come back because um, I'll, we'll see what it looks like. At a distance it looks okay, but up close I can tell. It's just, I didn't, you know what I'm going to do? Mm, I could take it off. Let me just, I'm going to blot it. And just get the water off it. OMG, that kind of looks cool. <gasps> I've never done that before. Wow, that looks cool. I might leave it like that. <gasps> I never did that before. I'm leaving it like that for now. See, that was a happy accident. Oh my gosh. What happened was, well, you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, now, where am I? Um, I'm going to go away and finish up everything that I've already done, just get it all done everywhere, mainly just the sunsets, and finish my hearts, and then I'm going to come back with my white, because I think that's the last thing, all right, and we'll make it a little shorter. All right, I have to say, I think I put orange on here, and just... It's just a little bit different. I think I did add a little red too. I might not have added red. This just might be orange. But I think I was adding red just to bump it up. And it really does make a difference. It does. So anyway, but just for today, I did not add any orange. And the other thing is I'm not sure about putting the the black in here right now it's just going to be like this and all you can tell is the white is missing I've done my borders and I did it in a wash this time because if you look at this one these are solid 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 and the white is a wash but there's you know I'm gonna just see what this looks like. I mean, I, I'm loving the way that black turned out, so I just want to leave it. I'm going to go in now and do the white. <clears throat> One of the most fun is to do this moon. So I'm going to come in so you can see me. And we're going to float white, so I'm corner loading. And I like it to be kind of strong color because I'm going to push it all up against this side. And that, that might have been a little too strong because, like I said, you can always come back and add. I'm rinsing my brush just because I feel like I overdid it. But I'm going to keep it moving. Slide it around. And I have white on the other part of my brush, so that shouldn't be there. Just take it off. I got white on the back end of my brush when I loaded because I can't see the white paint on my palette as much. I put my brush down in a spot that had um, paint on it. So I'm going to start a brand new runway right here. And so I know that there's no white on the other end. And all my moons, this is hand drawn, they all look different. I, I don't trace. Actually, that's not true. I think, no, on this one I didn't trace anything. I used a stencil for my hearts. If we, I'm walking till you're ready. Okay, babe. Ooh, kiwi right in my ear. But even when I did, and I'll show you all my pumpkins, I hand drew each pumpkin. And I'm not sure that's really smart or not. Like, I don't know. It's easier for me than to trace and the other thing is when I trace the carbon paper that I use to get the design on the piece doesn't erase very well. So if I misplace it or I put it in the wrong spot, it's, it doesn't come off. And I generally design on the wood instead of um, on paper 
which I don't know that's just something I'm doing right now because I do a lot of work I don't want to just do it on paper and like I said I don't like to repeat so I'm gonna go around one more time but wait look at the see the way that starts to pop contrast is very important the other place I want to put a little bit of white is right on the bottom or you know what I'm gonna back off the weight a little bit because I'm a really full strength I'm gonna put some on these hearts so I'm gonna go down this side and just tuck it in the bottom it's really fun um, painting on a round piece it's very I don't know like I'm enjoying it so much but just the repetitive nature oops that was really heavy um, and something about it it's very soothing see Barb Owen she knew what she was doing when she did that mandala class I love sharing what we love with each other because I wouldn't know about mandalas if I hadn't have taken that class. I don't know if it's coming up on camera, but man, it's I'm gonna do a l I'm gonna do my moons one more time. I mean they look fine. They actually look fine. But I'm just gonna make them a little darker on the very back and I am lifting up my bristles a little just so that I stay on the, the real back edge of that I don't know why I just want it to all right that looks good now I want to try and do the same thing that I did for the black part with the white and we'll see if it works I don't know but because it was a happy accident so I'm going to make a wash, like I'm adding water to the white paint, and I'm going to paint it on the same way I did. And it was a little too wet, remember? And so I went to soak it up, and that's how the happy accident happened. So it basically just stained the wood. I don't know that it's as necessary with the white because it is, you know, white, but... And this does not look nearly as wet as the black was. So, in other words, I actually loaded my brush properly. <laughs> but, I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. I gotta do the dot. Sometimes I can, like, alter the shape a little bit from the burning if the burning got a little out of control hot I like that shape let's put a little on the dot I'm having a good painting day today because sometimes these circles will just grow on you I really really like that but I think I should blot it I'm gonna blot just to see I didn't really pick up this part of it. And then I'm pretty much done. But the other thing that I could do is to add a few dots. So I have a nice healthy puddle of white here. And I'm just going to take a stylus. I don't know. And I'm going to use this little bit chubbier side. And just go until I run out of paint up here. It just looks pretty. I like it to look like stars. I could probably do them in yellow as well. But just like something about that white. I'm going to go this way so I don't stick my hand in it. Let me come down. Kiwi, what's the matter? What's the matter? Do you hear the dog? Jenny just came down. Oops. I feel like I'm putting my hand in something. I already put my hand in some... What's the matter, huh? I'm sticking to the lighter areas with the initial dot so that it's not right on the black. I don't know. There's a method to my madness, you guys. My voice is getting harsh. I don't know why.
Where else could I add? You know what I might add? Some dots in paint here. Oh, sorry. I'm just thinking. And I forgot. I forget you're listening. Hopefully you're listening, because I know this has gone on a while. <laughs> um, my videos aren't short, you guys, but I like to do them in real time so that you can see exactly the process. So, now, man, I'm tempted to put dots, like, right here, but I don't know what color. And... I don't need to and then the other thing I'm just not sure about is if I should add some of this black wash or the soft black here just to kind of fill this space but for now I think I'm gonna walk away and and call it done but that you guys is how I add color let's come in I'm just gonna show you and it isn't perfect how I add color like I could I want to show you something another way to really make something pop is I'm gonna add a little bit of this soft black well I made dots so I don't want to mess it up right on the inside of here I don't know if that actually did what I thought it would do Now, I did it to one, so I got to do it to everything because um, that's what a mandala is. You, you choose, you make a choice, and you just keep it moving. Just keep moving around the piece. But what you do to one little spot, you kind of have to do to the rest so that that looks um, consistent, right? And I didn't mess it up but I don't know that it needed it. And that one was just super dark. So let, let me come up a little bit. And I did the white in a wash. So everything is a wash this time. I didn't do any um, opaque. I mean, these floats don't really show any background, but, and then the other thing I could do is just add little white highlights, like a little line here and there, but for the most part, I think it's done. I like it. That was a super fast one, you guys. I'm going to just hold it up for a sec, because I'm so tempted. I think I need to put the, the soft black here. I'm just going to put it, I'm going to do it. All right, and this could be a big mistake, but I'm going to keep it really soft, not um, like I'm going to walk away from the color, in other words. I don't want it to be wide, the flute. I just want it to be right up against here. So hopefully I won't stick my hand in the dots I did, but I'm going to do it here. Just gently. I think it's going to be okay. Holding my wrist up a little is not my favorite, but I'm just putting it right in there. I think it just sets this down or something, right? Isn't it? Yeah, Kiwi, yeah. Yep, yep, I agree. I just think it finishes it off. I didn't put any here. I hope I didn't stick my hand in white. It's super subtle, but it's there. And then the last thing I do, did I sign this? Yes, I signed it, but I'm gonna varnish. So I'll be back when this is completely dry and I'm gonna show you how it looks varnished. Okay, it's all dry. I am almost out. I might have to, I heard uh, Michael's is open, so I might stop off there today and get some more varnish because I'm out. Um, I have this matte varnish, but I like to do these with a satin. And this happens to be Ceram Coats exterior interior. And all I do when I varnish is just put it right on the piece, which is lazy again, and that's probably way too much. 
but I take, this is just a soft brush that I've used forever. And I am just gonna slather this with this satin varnish and get it in all the nooks and crannies of the wood burning. I think I'm gonna just take off the extra. I just went onto my paper towel and just wiped some of the extra off my brush and then come in and that's it. Take off all the ridges and bubbles. OMG, it just makes it come to life. Putting it right in the water because the varnish is water based as well. And when that dries, I don't know if the camera does it justice, but something about adding that varnish. Oh, I picked up some white. Damn, that white might not have been dry. The varnish picked it up. That makes me mad. I can add white to that when it's after the varnish is dry. But if you see what I mean? Can you see how it picked it up? It must not have been dry. It really needs to cure, evidently. Nothing else seems to have picked up. Like my dip dots are fine. I didn't smudge them. Yeah, and it looks like it picked up some of the black, too. Look on the black side. That was perfect. Oh, bugger. It's all right. That's life. At a distance, it looks fine. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Oh, that's it. Thanks for watching.